Welcome back to this week's edition of The Lead. I'm Samantha Narson. Let's get started. A new season lies closely ahead. This includes hurricane and back to school seasons. Florida will be experiencing a hurricane during the coronavirus pandemic, which complicates preparation efforts. The possibility of a spread within crowded storm shelters has led to state recommendations that counties impose rules to protect refugees from the storm. These rules include screening people before they're allowed inside shelters, social distancing, and limiting shelters to fewer than 50 people. The state plan to distribute personal protective equipment kits at shelters and hotels. For more information, head to wuft.org for this and all your news needs. Hurricane shelter admissions are not the only complication COVID-19 presents during hurricane season. The Leeds Violet Comber Weiland shows us how Palm Beach County businesses deal with hurricane season amidst the pandemic. As COVID-19 cases continue to skyrocket in South Florida, there comes the difficulty of dealing with the impending hurricane season. For nine-round Boca Raton owner Jonathan Ellis, this required swift decision making. All the forecasts we're talking about, high winds, thunderstorms, basically by around seven or eight o'clock in the evening Saturday, I said, all right, we're going to be closed. Nine round Boca Raton stayed open despite the pandemic and impending hurricane season. Business has been more limited than usual. However, Ellis says the gym is determined to operate under protective measures. Any business owner has to draw the, the line between being open and available for their customers, but also looking at the, the safety of not only the customers, but employees as well. Farmer's Table in Boca Raton is another business gearing up for hurricane season. It's a popular local restaurant. Director of Operations Sam Bonasso says precautions for hurricanes ensure the safety of all guests. So we never really want to overstep those, those thoughts and those emotions by the general public or by the staff. Uh, the last thing we'll ever do is put somebody in danger to you know, try to try to stay open. So Farmer's Table has also managed to stay open and do well during the pandemic while implementing proper safety measures. Both businesses hope that with the right precautions, they may remain safe and continue to attract customers. In South Florida, I'm Violet Comber Weiland for The Lead. It's Florida's back to school tax free weekend. The Lead's Gabrielle Mercurio tells us about how parents are adding up the cost and thankful to subtract the tax. Florida parents will be able to buy any back-to-school items their children may need at a discounted rate during Florida's tax-free weekend. The state's 6% sales tax will be exempt from August 7th through the 9th on clothing and footwear priced at $60 or less, school supplies at $15 or less, and personal computers on the first $1,000. For Palm Beach County mom Christine Delgado, buying school supplies for her fifth grader, Isabella, will look different this year. I think it's going to be a significant amount less than what I buy for her um, right now. Just the, you know, paper, pencil is what I'm making sure she has. And that's pretty much it. And, you know, normally you buy crayons and all those other things. And I'm not, I, you know, she has stuff at home here that she can use it. Many students, including Isabella, will be attending school virtually this fall. As a result, schools have changed students' school supply lists. It's drastically less than what normally they, they send out. The only thing different for the virtual is they want them to have a dry eraser board with dry eraser markers. Cassie Gullo has one child in elementary school and one in middle school. Since both of them are starting the school year online, she says they'll miss going back to school shopping. When I was younger, it was exciting to go pick out a new backpack and pick out actual school clothes and different, you know, you know, items, but so they're kind of bummed out about that this year. However, Gullo plans on picking up a few tax-free items. Eventually they're going to need it, so why not take advantage of that now and then just use it when they need it. As for Delgado, she's excited to be able to purchase some back-to-school items online. I already have stuff in my cart, so I said that's it. And when we do our order pickup, we're going to have some school supplies with it. For The Lead, I'm Gabriella Mercurio. The 2020 MTV Video Music Awards are approaching and two popular artists are tied for the most nominations. With nine nominations each, Lady Gaga and Ariana Grande have tied for the most MTV VMA nominations for the 2020 Music Awards. Among the categories in which they are nominated are Best Collaboration and Pop. A few other artists are also towards the top of the list for most nominations, including Billie Eilish, The Weeknd, Justin Bieber, and Post Malone. This year's VMAs will be unique as the nominations will include categories for the best quarantine performance and best music video from home. Voting ends August 23rd and the ceremony will take place on August 30th. 
The 2020 MTV VMAs will air live at 8 p.m. The future of the popular app TikTok is uncertain. The lead's Elizabeth Velasquez explains why the app may be banned and the bidding process that they are currently experiencing. Teenagers rush to their phones to post the hundreds of drafts they have in their TikTok after hearing the popular social media application could potentially be banned. This has created commotion among users, owners, and politicians. Here are five things you need to know about the potential ban. According to Data Reportal, TikTok has more than 800 million users worldwide and over 100 million monthly users in the United States. Sensor Tower reported the app has been downloaded over 2 billion times from the Apple Store and Google Play. President Donald Trump says TikTok poses national security threats. The Chinese company ByteDance is the owner of TikTok and has been accused of stealing personal data from users. Microsoft released a statement expressing its commitment to reviewing the security of TikTok but emphasizing the discussion on purchasing TikTok is not set and will be further evaluated. Users say the app should not be banned because it has become a platform for advocacy. President Trump issued an executive order forcing the sale of TikTok and announced the social media app will be banned in the United States if it is not sold. For The Lead, I am Elizabeth Velasquez. That's it for this week's episode of The Lead. I'm Samantha Narson. Thanks for watching.